In this next video, we're going to go over the restrictions on the numerical values for the elastic moduli of linear elastic materials. The relationship between the stress and the strain for linear elastic isotropic material is shown here. The question is, are there restrictions on the possible values that I can use for Young's Mollius and Poisson's ratio? In order for the linear elastic material model to behave in a nice way, I want the relationship between the stress and the strain to satisfy the following restriction. Every time I strain the materials, every time I apply a particular strain on the material, I want energy to go into the deformation of the, of the material. So I want epsilon multiplied by C epsilon, or the stress multiplied by the strain, the dot product between those two, to always be greater than zero. Which means that C, which is already a symmetric matrix, has to be positive definite. Therefore, if you remember the section on positive definite symmetric matrices, this implies that the eigenvalues must all be greater than zero. If you calculate the eigenvalues for this matrix, if you can just put it in Mathematica and calculate the eigen system, you'll find that the eigenvalues are 1 minus Poisson's ratio over E, 1 plus Poisson's ratio over E, and 2, 1 plus Poisson's ratio over E. The restriction that those three have to be greater than zero will imply that E has to be greater than zero and Poisson's ratio has to be between half and negative one. It's important to understand that this is a model, a restriction on the possible mathematical models for linear elastic isotropic materials. Those restrictions imply that the material will always produce strain when stress is applied on it. And the stresses and the strain are usually in the same direction and so energy is always stored inside the object when additional strain is applied to it. These restrictions can be found using an alternative and intuitive method. In a uniaxial state of stress, the applied stress is only sigma on 1. The corresponding strains from the stress-strain relationship are sigma on 1 over E, negative Poisson's ratio sigma on 1 over E, negative Poisson's ratio sigma on 1 over E. The energy stored in the material, in that case, is equal to the corresponding stress multiplied by the corresponding strain. So sigma on 1 multiplied by sigma on 1 over E multiplied by 2 because of the linearity of the relationship between the stress and the strain. So it's equal to sigma on 1 squared over 2 E. For this energy to be positive, then sigma squared over 2EE has to be greater than 0, which implies that Young's modulus has to be greater than 0, which intuitively means every time I apply a stress, the strain is in the same direction. If it's a tensile stress, it has to be tensile strain. If it's a compressive stress, it has to be compressive strain. Similarly, in a shared state of stress, I have sigma on 2 and sigma on 2, the corresponding shear strain is equal to sigma on 2 over 2g and sigma on 2 over 2g. The energy is equal to the sum of each stress component multiplied by the corresponding strain component, sigma on 2 multiplied by sigma on 2 over 2g, sigma on 2 multiplied by sigma on 2 over 2g. So the energy is equal to half, this half is because of linearity, 2 sigma on 2 sigma on 2 over 2g, which gives me this relationship. This relationship, these numbers have to be greater than 0, and therefore g has to be greater than 0, therefore Poisson's ratio has to be greater than negative 1. In a hydrostatic state of stress, the stress is given by a matrix with values of p and p and p on the diagonal, everything else is 0, the corresponding strain is given by this matrix. Multiplying each stress component by the corresponding strain component, adding the three values, multiplying by half because of the linearity between the stress and the strain, will bring this relationship. This number has to be greater than zero, which implies that Poisson's ratio has to be less than half. And so the final relationships are Young's modulus has to be greater than zero, and Poisson's ratio has to be between negative one and half. 
In other words, those three constants, Young's modulus, the shear modulus, and the bulk modulus, the three of them have to be greater than zero, implying that Poisson's ratio has to be greater than negative one, and Poisson's ratio has to be less than half, and so we end up with these restrictions on the numerical values that Young's modulus and Poisson's ratio can have for linear elastic isotropic material models. If you repeat what we just did, but for orthotropic materials, you will get other restrictions, and these other restrictions are these moduli shown here have to be greater than zero, this equation has to be greater than zero, and this has to be the relationship between Poisson's ratios and the various values of the Young's moduli.